Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Phil Duvall, and I'm happy to be talking about the subject with you because we're hearing so much information these days about criminal justice reform and reducing the prison population. So uh, it seems to me the best thing we can do is to prepare uh, people to when they're coming out of prison and to be supportive of them when they come out. So that's what this is about. The audience, I think, that might be listening to this would be one of three categories, I think. Uh, one is someone who's new to both uh, the Bridges work uh, and to reentry, but is now it's on their radar and they want to hear about how this kind of work can be done. Uh, the second group might be people who are already in Bridges work and are working in communities that, that use that idea but uh, are now contemplating getting into the reentry work too. And the third category might be people who are doing reentry work but don't know about bridges and what we do. So I'm going to uh, try to go right down the middle of the road and, and uh, give enough information for each of those uh, three uh, categories. And um, I'll start by uh, describing uh, the workbook that you see in front of you, this is used by people who are inmates. It's a pre-release book generally. And then I'll talk about the complete model that we have. And then I'll share with you about how this is being done, actually how it plays out so that you get a real sense of uh, the, how this could be used. So that's our, our journey for today. And these are my co-authors of those books that you just looked at. Uh, the name of the book is Getting Ahead While Getting Out. And Mitch Lipster is an attorney who's played a huge role in Marion, Ohio. And you'll be hearing quite a bit about Marion uh, in, in the reentry program and building the model there. And uh, Michelle Wood is a restored citizen. A restored citizen is someone who's been out of prison for over three years and is no more likely, according to the research, to reoffend than anybody. So Michelle is a probation officer now, and the three of us wrote this book together. And uh, Marion, Ohio happens to be, uh, I live near there and they live there, and it just seems to be the place where this all kind of arose from. Now, a little bit of history. Uh, Ruby Payne wrote a book called A Framework for Understanding uh, uh, Poverty, and that has, uh, was used essentially by educators. Uh, that came out in the mid-90s. Uh, then Ruby and Terry Ducey Smith and I wrote a book for communities called Bridges Out of Poverty. And that gets used in, in the community settings. Uh, getting Ahead and Just Getting By World came out in 04. And that is what this book, Getting Ahead While Getting Out, is based on. Uh, the, the book you see, Investigations into Economic Class in America, is Getting Ahead for First Generation Low-Income Students. Uh, Bridges to Sustainable Communities is for community leaders uh, to get the same language. What we're developing here is a common language between uh, the community folks that do work in poverty areas, the middle class, you would say, are using Bridges Out of Poverty. The common language then is for people who are in poverty or struggling to get by, or in this case, returning citizens are using the Getting Ahead books. And then uh, and then the folks who are legislators and judges and the like are using the sustainability book. So we're able to reach all of those populations. Uh, our success with this over the years, and this is I'm talking about getting ahead right now, is that we're in 47 states and six countries. And I just want you to know that uh, research has been done, peer reviewed, published articles about the effectiveness of getting ahead and just getting by world. The methodology of getting ahead is the very same methodology, no matter which of the books uh, it is applied to. For example, the, the one for uh, first generation students, same methodology. For getting ahead while getting out, returning citizens, same methodology. And so that is essentially what's being studied. And from beginning to end, we're finding that getting ahead really does what we hope it will do. And then there are studies that are underway right now. So I want you to have confidence that we're moving from being evidence informed, as some people call it, to a promising program, as some researchers call it. And we want to get as high a status as possible in terms of evidence-based uh, work. So it's important for you to know that um, our work is being used in different sectors. 
So uh, if you look on the left side, you see these little uh, blocks, building blocks, and the first one there is a community. So what I just described to you was what the, the solutions are for the resourced. That means the middle class and the people who are uh, secure. And then the other column is those who are under-resourced or thought of sometimes as people in poverty or struggling to get by. So we have this, these two columns and we have books for, uh, for these different sectors. So K-12, you can see there's an array of books there. For the workplace, there is a, an array of books there. And then there is uh, criminal justice. And this is what we're talking about today. So the book that we would recommend that we use in the corrections field for um, uh, corrections officers, uh, for uh, COs, you know, that they would be reading and going to workshops on tactical communications. That's basically for first responders and for people in, in working in the field in criminal justice. And then of course there's health and healthcare, and then there's higher ed. So all of this uh, is happening in these different states, these 47 different states. And this means that you know, we are an existing presence. And my hope is that those of us that are doing bridges across the country can now decide that we actually want to do something about reentry, and 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 be of significant help. So these are the people that help create this. There, um, most of them are inmates at the Marion Correctional Institute in Marion, Ohio. Uh, Michelle is standing in the center, as you can see, and uh, Mitch is in the back row, uh, third from the right, sort of the gray hair. Uh, the two African American guys in the very back on the left side were lifers. And uh, they turned out to be a tremendous help uh, to help our people navigate and to give credibility to what we were doing and to be very informative about what kind of changes need to be made in getting ahead that would give us the book, Getting Ahead While Getting Out, that would be effective. These are places where getting ahead is being done. Uh, I've marked the, the women's prisons in red, so you can see that. Um, and we won't take a lot of time to just go over this, but I want you to know that we've been doing this in, in um, a lot of places. And now we have a learning community building up of people who have used this successfully. So uh, just note in the bottom right-hand corner that uh, recently uh, we, we realize now that uh, we are going to be introducing uh, getting ahead while getting out and the bridges model uh, in all 28 prisons in Ohio. Really happy about that, of course. And in this, I guess because uh, this originated here. So we're particularly pleased about that. So our uh, getting out reentry model, here's sort of the basic questions. What's the goal? And I would say, well, build the complete model. Just don't do part of it. And where to begin? Well, Getting Ahead While Getting Out is a pre-release book. And you do the, the complementary training using tactical communications or bridges for the staff. So those things come first. Um, and do you have to use the whole model? And yes, uh, you wouldn't want to do this piecemeal. It, this is a very complex subject, just like poverty is, and we have to have a comprehensive approach. Uh, this title of this of this webinar is making change at individual, institutional, community levels. So uh, yes, build it, build it in phases. And then we've already talked about the books that you would need to have to do this, and the workshops. So the key features for getting out are that this workbook is done in uh, 20 sessions. There are 11 modules. It's a facilitated learning experience, people sitting around the table talking to each other. One of the key features is that uh, we have a, a, a threat assessment that we look at that is deals with the first 72 hours upon release. Uh, that's when people get in trouble. The research tells us that. So there are essentially three plans that I'll be talking about that people create before they come out of prison. Um, so the reentry model, this is all big picture stuff. We want to engage the families of the returning citizens. We want to train corrections officers and probation pr uh, parole officers. And uh, we want to engage other uh, reentry programs uh, in our communities and then provide institutional change and support and community change and support too, to returning citizens. So this is what getting ahead and while getting out kind of looks like. Uh, we call it a kitchen table learning experience. And um, you can tell who's, who the facilitator is because he's wearing a red shirt. Now, if this was done in the community setting and people were sitting around, you would not know who's leading this because 
everyone will be dressed differently and so on and so forth. And, and the idea here is that our facilitators are not teaching, they're facilitators, they're part of the group itself. They're doing as much learning and engaged in it as, as the uh, inmates themselves. So this is Ray from Tampa. The facilitator is Ray Plowski from uh, Tampa, Florida. So here's uh, our educational approach is, is really crucial to this. And I usually spend lots of time talking about it, but uh, the facilitator's agenda is to be agenda free. Now that may seem a bit odd because we're trying to prepare people to come out of prison and sure that's an agenda. But on the other hand, uh, we present information for people to investigate. And as they investigate that information, they begin to talk in the group and learn from each other and analyze this stuff and, and put their lives in context of all of this so that in the end, they are the ones that make an argument for change and they are the ones that build their own plans. Another way of saying this is when we did this in uh, Marion, as it was being developed, one of the fellows, the, one of the inmates there said, there are 44 programs in, in this facility and we've been to all of them. And this is the first program that didn't have a middle-class guy at the front of the room telling us what to do. So the bottom line is what's most important is whose mouth the argument for change comes from. And if it comes out of the mouths of the people that are sitting around the table, that's what we're after. So the first module, uh, we jump right in and our facilitators start listening because the first question we ask is, what, what is your life gonna be a, like upon release? Think about that. Well, of course they probably are thinking about it. So they begin to talk about it and we say, well, draw an image of that or you know, to really put it on paper so that your ideas are represented there about what your life is gonna be like upon release. Now, when this is happening, sometimes uh, the stories or the ideas that people tell uh, might be setting off red flags in the facilitator's mind, but our facilitators never intervene at that point, but simply let that roll out because that's the first thing that's on their mind. The next thing that happens, well, this is what that might look like. So this is a woman who's in prison and her dream world is represented in black and white because it's not real yet. So she has this, this image of herself as my future story or what's going to happen upon my release is going to look like this. So that's the kind of activity that is. What they also do in the first module is take a good hard look at uh, what their community is going to be like when they go back. Now they may not have been in their community for a while, so they're talking to and communicating with people and their families and they're trying to imagine what's it going to be like, what is it like, and at the same time, we introduce ideas like, well, what percent of your income is going to go for housing, do you suppose? And, and so we begin to get into the details that make them think deeper. They're beginning to think and analyze deeper uh, what that community is going to be, because when they go back, it's going to be very important that they've decoded that and thought about it a lot. The second module is one that uh, isn't as deep and difficult. Uh, that first one is really deep conversations. This is to kind of decompress a little bit and let the group talk about important subjects about language. We have nine different topics that come about language and why that's important is that we make and break relationships around, around language issues. So people who are uh, in prison often, if they're, most of them are low income people and, and, and working class folks, and they might be using uh, the casual register, not proper grammar and syntax and so on and so forth. And when they come out and they're gonna go, go to work in places, they need to know that in, in the workplace and at school, there's different languages being used, right? The formal register instead of the casual register and so on. And this is a very neutral thing and it allows people to really get in and start talking. They begin acting like the group members learning from each other. So the next uh, piece we do is that we take a look at our theory of change. In other words, uh, we're going to say right up front that, look, when you go to the different places in the community, you're going to be going to different agencies and different places. And most places you go to get your resources and what you need are going to want you to change the way you think and behave. Uh, you know, isn't that what we're trying to do with returning citizens, right? Uh, so we just lay our cards on the table and say, here's our theory of change. We aren't playing any magic here. We're not doing anything that is not revealed to you. And we're just right up front about the kind of things it takes to change. In the first module, we ask a question, uh, how do you solve problems? 
and we discover doing that, you know, all these different ways that people are solving problems while they're out, out. And, uh, and that leads us to a whole lot of information about how poverty is really working. And so what we do then is, is say, well, we know that when, when everything is unstable in your life, you're living in what we call the tyranny of the moment, and you're just busy solving problems one after another, and you're the one that has to do it, and that makes it a very concrete world. And as long as you're just solving problems again and again and again, you're stuck in that abstract world. And so this is a mental model we actually share with people that in order to get out of poverty, you have to be able to get to the abstract. And then from that, you have to make some plans and procedural steps and build a future story for yourself. And that makes it possible for you to actually, while you're living in chaos, to be able to be in the abstract and think differently and take yourself to a new space. Now, this is all very abstract, but it turns out to be a major key in uh, being able to handle issues for people that are living in a really uh, unstable environment. So uh, here is what some juvenile offenders in Cleveland said about that. Uh, they were using this very same book in a juvenile facility. So to get out of the tyranny of the moment and to change our lives, we must be able to get to the abstract. Now, these young men were gang members and they're going through getting ahead and they're beginning to analyze, decode, put a context to all these things in their lives. So that, that's an important module. In the next module, we take a big look at the causes of poverty and there's four clusters of research, individual choice and behavior. And this is where most reentry programs, I think, spend their time, but we broaden it out. And we take a look at systemic causes of poverty. And beyond that, we look at what's in your community that's a cause. And we also look at exploitation. So four categories of research on that. And what happens here is that people begin to put a much bigger context to their life. They also learn how the middle class was formed, how wealth creation takes place for the middle class. So now they're beginning to get the deeper context about economics and so on. And it's not just about me and my behavior, but there's many other things at play. The next one is to look at the hidden rules of class. Well, in the previous module, they learned about income inequality, which means that wealthy people live on down gated, uh, long driveways, gated communities, golf courses, middle-class people live uh, around the best schools and people in poverty elsewhere, right? So we don't know each other well. So now when they come out of prison, they will know the hidden rules of the wealthy folks, the middle class folks, and people in poverty, and, and be able to go into a workplace and navigate that workplace more skillfully because they know it's based on the rules of middle class. So I'm taking you through this at hyperspeed, but imagine people really having a long time, plenty of opportunity to discuss this around the table with a facilitator who never tells you what to do. So here's what one fellow said, knowing that differences between poverty and middle class exist and where the lines are drawn is a definite plus for anyone trying to rejoin society after serving any length of time in a correctional facility. Without knowing what obstacles there are to overcome, you can't overcome them. So the group is analyzing naming problems and finding solutions. One of the key things we talk about here too is that in order to achieve anything, when you come out of prison, if you want to stay sober, if you want to go to school, if you want to get a job, you're going to have to make some changes in your relationships. Now, I come from the addiction field, so we say things like you have to be with dry people in dry places. That means that for you to maintain your sobriety, you've got to change who you hang with. Well, the same is true for anyone living in a really unstable environment because in that world, you solve problems with friends and people around you because you don't have money to solve those problems. You use a relationship-based approach. Now you're going to come out and you're going to go back into a world that's expecting you to be like you were. And, you're, and your friends are going to have a party for you and you're going to step straight back into that. And if you have time to reflect on it before you get there, you might actually change your mind about what you want to do with your relationships. Then we get into describing what the 11 resources are. This goes to our definition of poverty. And those are these 11 things. So it's not just money. So now if you want to come out of prison and you can't get a job, not right away perhaps, uh, but if you have uh, these other resources that you can be working on, it's just a matter of figuring out where to find or how to build those, you can build your way out of poverty and eventually get to the financial side of it. But these all build up a quality of life. 
and it gives you something to do about it. So that is the introduction of our definition of poverty. In the next module, we do what's called a threat assessment. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the first 72 hours. So there has to be a way for people to really think through how they're going to get through that without getting in trouble. So this is just a, a, a form that they use and they create uh, trend lines for themselves and they you know, take this as old as you get. So if you're 30, uh, 45 years old, you're coming over several, several columns over, but you're showing a trend line about where the ups and downs have been. And what this does is it helps a person see the patterns in their life so that they can see what it was that got them in trouble and where the dangerous points are that allow them to make a plan about how to overcome that and what to do for that first 72 hours. And this is just another worksheet that's in the workbook that uh, people use to kind of deepen their thinking about that plan that they're going to make. Then we do a self-assessment of those 11 resources because you're going to have to find out where you are in your assessments, to, where your strengths are and weaknesses are, and that's where you end up with a bar chart that looks like this. Uh, so this person has a lot of ones and twos and on a five-point scale across the 11. They're going to use their mental resource to build the others, deciding on which ones they need to build. This is all aiming towards those three plans that people leave with when they come out of getting out and re-enter the world. Another theme in this is that this work is never just about you. It's about you and your community, and that pattern shows up all the time throughout the workbook. So a community assessment is done, and that means bringing people from the community in and asking them questions and having the, the, uh, the getting ahead investigators, as we call them, asking questions of people uh, from nine different areas of life imagine education and uh, employment and criminal justice and leadership and health issues and so on. And so then after doing that, the next question is, okay, how do I build my resources? And that takes us to this tool that people use and uh, which things are you doing in your life along those 11 categories that are about just getting by, keeping you in poverty, maintaining you in poverty, and which of them are about getting ahead and, and moving up. So this is a tool that not only the inmates use before they get out, but our Bridges initiatives use in their own institutions to see what they do with this. The community uses this tool to see what it's doing in this regard. Funders use it too. So we're all using the same tool, all having the same conversations and the same language with these things. I thought this was interesting, is that people take a look at where these resources are and they're learning about this and they create this uh, this uh, uh, chart in what uh, the empty space, I think, is what's most interesting to me, is that there's nothing there about systems change. Isn't that interesting? So uh, this is the kind of work that people do. And they get into deep discussions and do lots of learning. This is such a fun way to learn when you don't have a teacher with the answers. Then we make our personal plans and community plans, because that's part of the theme that we have in this and what people end up with is they're incarcerated, if you see at the top, they've been through getting ahead while getting out, they built these three plans. One is a 72-hour stability plan, which we've already talked about. The next is a SMART plan, which is for immediate needs. So when people come out, I mean, oftentimes people are given, this is a true story, $40, dropped off in the middle of the night downtown of the city, and told to get a job and a place to stay and, and to make contact with your... Uh, mental health provider, and uh, there you are. So there are immediate needs that people have to take care of. So that's a, a second plan. And then the third plan is about how are you gonna transform your life altogether around those 11 resources that we were talking about. So those are the three plans. And these are the kind of mental models that people create of their plans. So we always go back to the images. We create images about how we're gonna support ourselves we have all the paperwork for a smart plan, but we need to have the, uh, this, these kind of images in our heads too. So here's a graduation after this has happened. And this happens to be those youngsters I was talking about. You can see that because they're in prison, their faces are blurred. But uh, this, this group, these guys were gang members from different gangs. 
And uh, Michelle Wood, who's standing on the far right, our co-author, uh, she said that uh, they, as these guys continued to, you know, their lives, they aren't released yet, uh, their interactions with each other, even though they came from different gangs, was different because they had been through this learning experience together. So that's how getting ahead in the workplace works. Now let's talk about our model. So uh, the role of corrections, the people in the corrections can be the catalyst for this, right? The leadership is the warden and the staff. In Ohio, the reason we're going to be in all 28 prisons is because somebody who was familiar with uh, getting ahead while getting out, working in Toledo, got upgraded and given a, a promotion to actually work at the state level and, uh, and then advocate for using getting ahead while getting out in all prisons. She's a catalyst. Uh, the role in our community is we have to have catalysts, organizers, funders, trainers, and those things are happening in Bridges community as it stands. We just need to get those communities committed to helping returning citizens that are coming back to their place. So there's five principles that this is based on. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I just wanted to say when you're putting together a reentry model, these things are expected of you. And so, of course, we do them because they make sense. Now, the number one thing here for us is that we see returning citizens as problem solvers and co-creators. Now, they've been seen and named as the problem. And this is the same thing in poverty. The people in poverty and their families are blamed for it. Here, we understand that people are problem solvers. And when you honor them that way, and then they begin to choose to ch solve problems and help their communities and come back to serve, as I'm going to show you they do, then we're all co-creators making a better community for our, ourselves. Now, training, we've talked about this. So we just want to embed the concepts in our program designs and delivery. It's one thing to hear these ideas. It's a whole different thing to use them. And that means you become an, an innovator and you start evaluating. And so all of this is just creating more and more best practices and, and ideas to share with other people. Um, of course, there has to be uh, this idea of evaluations and, and we have to cover multiple needs. All of this is the kind of best practices that come out of the studies that have been done on reentry models that are solid. So we want to be able to follow that as well and learn from people that went ahead of us. This is more of the same. So you can see here, create a network of potential employers, cultivate employer satisfaction supports, use cognitive behavioral treatment technology, techniques. Getting ahead is actually a cognitive approach um, and, and that's all deeply embedded straight in and oftentimes associated with uh, motivational interviewing and so on. So these are the kind of evaluations we have. We have a, a, a process or an organization we work with called Charity Tracker and so we can evaluate stability and resource development and return on investment and all of this is computerized and very easy to put the data into. These are the books that the training would be done. So if you imagine getting ahead while getting out is for the returning citizens, getting ahead and just getting by will be for their family members. The R rules, similar content for their children. And then the community gets these other books uh, and, and training programs as well. So the common language here is really important. So what you, what you have here is if you look at the center, the word release is in there. So all the pre-release stuff is done above that. All the post-release is built around an existing Bridges Collaborative. So imagine these Bridges communities already doing good work in different sectors, now deciding to do re-entry as well. Every returning citizen is going to benefit from that. Now, here's a video I want to show you, and I, I trust this will work for you. Uh, this was done in Marion, Ohio. Mitch Lipster is the one that uh, made this possible, so enjoy this. The Getting Ahead program has been extremely instrumental with just the whole bridging that gap from the time that our residents are at West Central and then coming out into the community. Great program. Learned a lot from it about where my resources are here in Marion. Uh, just what all I could get out of being in a low level income and to strive to get out of poverty. The programs were, 
was very valuable just to learn um, just how to grow in social capital and how to um, just interact with different people. We were arresting the same people over and over. Um, we found out that a lot of them didn't have employment, so they were reoffending in order to support a habit or to support their families. I think if everybody can get to getting ahead before it's too late, I think every little young generation would understand what getting ahead above poverty means before they make that same mistake I did of selling drugs to try to get ahead. I didn't really know what how bad Marion really was until they started the class and how important it was that we tried to help when we got out. Uh, getting ahead class is, is based upon us. You know, not only uh, educating us to you know poverty and you know the norms and values and how they differ in society, but as far as you know, just how how much we need a social network to to uh, you know to, to get on track and continue to stay on a positive track. I know these guys can do this. I know they can be successful. We we have I have numerous stories of guys that have you know gotten out of prison and come to work and have completed their probation successfully and have you know been working a forty a full time job since their release. And I just feel wholeheartedly that this program just gives them that extra step and lets them know that there are people here that are willing to help them. I mean, I haven't relapsed once. September 9th, I'll be a full year clean. I, I've i been work. I got released on March 2nd, and I started work on March 10th, and I haven't missed a day since. Our, our mission is for offenders to become successful law-abiding citizens. It's like the Getting Ahead program. They really do care. And I'm living proof of it because now I'm financially all right. Uh, I'm not selling drugs no more. And all the chapters that I read in that book, I'm applying it to everyday life. Justice system. Uh, programs like the Getting Ahead While Getting Out program are critically important because it provides an opportunity for someone to press the pause button while they are incarcerated. and have discussions about the barriers that they faced in the past, uh, some of the challenges that they have had either personally or employment-wise, um, and some of the issues with their families and how they might address or correct those kinds of things as they move forward and as they get out of um, the institution. And it just opened my eyes up to the perspective of what I wanted to do when I was released from it. It's, it's you know, my life is, and exactly where I want it to be right now. Like, you know, I have you know, the, the program and, you know, my community, everybody involved in my community that uh, uh, thanks for that. It's really, I'm extremely happy where I'm at. I'm extremely happy and, and excited about where I'm going. All right. Um, well, I hope you found that was inspiring, and that was a few years ago, and things are uh, getting better and better in Marion. Um, so one thing that's important to know is that they have five sober uh, living houses in Marion. I, I think uh, they're, they're covering all, all the bases here. Uh, also, uh, there's a, a large warehouse in Delaware. I won't read this whole thing to you. Uh, Delaware, Ohio is uh, within easy driving distance of, of, uh, of Marion. And uh, Sharon Millard, who uh, you saw in that clip, um, got a hold of people that ran a warehouse down there. And now it's actually possible for, for people coming to uh, out of prison that live in Marion, returning to Marion, to get a job within days. You heard one fellow say he got a job the next day. So now they, I think it's more than this now, but at that time there were 75 returned citizens working at this warehouse. So having employers engaged in this uh, is, is really exciting too. Um, I, I should say that Marion also has uh, what's called an employer resource network. And they have six uh, uh, for-profit and non-profits that have trouble with retention rates of their new hires from poverty. And they're getting really good results by providing support for those employees and interacting with those employers in a, in a way that is taking the bridges concepts 
to the middle managers and supervisors and the owners of the, of the company and using getting ahead uh, in the workplace for people coming in to into work and they're getting great return on investment on that as well so it's just another thing that they've done in marion to put together a complete re-entry model and a model that helps people from who are in, in poverty now we think of of the returning citizens as as problem solvers and in marion they're getting to the table and this is a story about changing policies uh, they had a a pay to stay uh, policy in in the local jail that we were informed of by returning citizens we were oblivious to that before that and what that basically meant was you paid 75 dollars when you booked in to jail and then you paid a daily rate i think of 50 dollars a day so when you left jail you had a new debt and then if you didn't uh, take care of that debt then that would turn up turn against you so the idea that this was going on seemed unfair to the bridges collaborative it's called marion matters and so they went to the uh the people that run the jail and suggested that they not do this because it seemed so unfair now i have to tell you that in all of our bridges communities we attract people from um, all classes all sectors all races and all political persuasions so when these policy things come up that's when it might trigger somebody from the left or right but what we're finding across the country working on poverty issues is that when people in poverty are, are pointing out what the barriers are and the bridges collaboratives like mary and matter start working on it that those narratives don't get kicked off people just solve the problem and in this case it took getting the aclu involved and um and the british broadcasting corporation and then they were able to get the the leaders of the county jail to change their mind and then they also i'm sure many of you have heard of band the box well this the same thing happened with that so they are engaged in the community and they do for each other and, and the kind of stories that are coming out about the relationships that are built across class lines and with returning citizens are just a wonderful thing to to behold so um there's our model and an example of a model uh, it's this is a very fast overview of what we do uh, but i would love it if you could get a hold of us there's my email address there's mitch lipsters and michelle woods uh, so take a get your camera out and take a picture of that and get a hold of us because we would love to help you in any way we possibly can uh, you know just remember that you know get a hold of us the idea is that there would be some training involved so you get up to speed on all these concepts and you have more time to get at it than what we've had today thank you so much for your time and i hope to talk to you sometime soon thank you thank you phil for this wonderful webinar uh, this is ruth wyrick from aha process and we are uh, glad to have you with us today to hear more about getting ahead while getting out one of the series of Phil's uh, Getting Ahead series. You can discover the online training options at ahaprocess.com forward slash events and learn about availability of training. And it's all done online, so you can stay in your office and gather this information. Thank you, Phil. We appreciate it. And we look forward to you guys joining our webinars. They're offered on the first and third Thursday of the month. Have a good day. And as Phil said, please, please contact him to learn more about the work so you can begin embedding it in your community. Have a good day, everybody.